The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the Terrific Tuesday, the September 17th edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstances of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question, but you can't dial in, Stevie's got your back. Go ahead and send me an email. Send that off to Steve at TFNN.com. Inside that subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tigers, then well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We start our day with a sea of green. All the U.S. indices that we track trading to the upside. Dow's up four tenths percent, 155 points, half percent for the S&P, 28.6 tenths for the Nasdaq, 112, one and a half percent for the Russell, 35 points there, one percent for the semis, a 48 point move. Trannies are up 246. You've got gold trade now at 2601. That's off seven bucks. Silver at 3116. That's up three pennies. Lights three crude 6965, up 65 cents. Natural gas at 239. That's up two pennies. And the 30-year treasury is back four ticks, printed out at 127.02. Our leader in the clubhouse to the upside is United Rentals. URR is a ticker symbol, 3% move, 24 buckaroonies. Lamb Research, up 15 bucks, 2%. Installed building products, 12 bucks, 5%. KLA Corp, 11 bucks, 1.5%. Bank of Montreal is up a little over $10. That's nearly a 3% move. Our shakers to the downside start off or lead off with Accenture down 15 bucks, 4%. Eli Lilly, 11 bucks, a little over 1%. Lockheed Martin, 8 bucks, 1%. Vertex Pharmaceuticals, seven dollars and change, one and a half percent. And United Health is off seven bucks. That's a one percent move to the downside. So we got movers and we've got shakers. Let's begin our day by taking a look at these markets, which right now are in overbought territory. Let's go figure that. How do you figure that out, Stevie? Well, we use a tool called the New York Stock Exchange Advanced Decline Oscillator. What is that? Well, that happens to be the difference between the nineteen. And 39 period exponential moving average of the advanced decline line. Panel number one up here is the New York Stock Exchange. Panel number two is the advanced decline line. You will see that we are at a new all time high today. So the move, most certainly, that we are seeing out here is very real. What has also taken place at 1109 is that we've got that advanced decline oscillator. Again, the difference between the 19 and 39 period exponential moving average of that advanced decline line data. And that is above the plus 150 level. What's what's that tell us, Stevie? Well, when you close above the 150 level, you are in you are in overbought territory. Doesn't mean you can't get more overbought, but if we take a look at how the market typically reacts, let's go back to our most recent overbought territory or our indicator on the advanced decline uh, oscillator, August 19th, and how that was resolved was price was moving higher inside the uh, New York Stock Exchange with lower highs inside of the advanced client oscillator. That eventually led to that decline out there. 
How about the next time out here we got to overbought conditions? And sometimes, so there's really two different ways that I've seen that the overbought condition will work its way up. It can be the one that we just took a look at where price continues to move higher and you get declining tops and advanced decline oscillator. Or if we come back to the uh, overbought condition back on the trading day of July 16. What we saw there was we just simply saw a move lower out there. No no um, divergence pattern with rising price and declining tops out there. So I can't tell you which one, which way this is going to. We'll, we'll certainly find out over the coming days. You know, the other thing about being above the plus 150 level, you've heard me say this before. Now, I don't know where we're going to close today. If we do close above the plus 150 level, it tells us about future highs to come. It just doesn't tell us when. And we talked about that um, even during this last overbought condition out here. We made the high back on the trading session of August 30th out there. And because we had daily, weekly, um, monthly topping signals out there, it sure looked like it was kind of like, are we really going to get back there? Well, uh, we're back there now as we speak when we take a look at the New York Stock Exchange. We are a new all-time high inside the New York Stock Exchange. We are in an overbought market. And that's kind of interesting going into Powell's statement tomorrow. We are in an overbought market, and that condition will get worked off. Now, we need to see where the stock market closes at day's end. If it is above that plus 150 level, then what I've just said should work. You know, It'll be very interesting coming into Powell's statement in an overbought market out there. Okay, so that's the first thing to look at. We also want to make sure that we pay attention to the spot fix index. That will be another tool for you and I to help us determine what the who's got the, who's got the leverage out here. And right now, you got the spot fix index. It's trading at uh, sixteen ninety two, and the fifty day expense moving average is at the seventeen thirty six level. If we get a close above seventeen thirty six today, and then again tomorrow, that will tell us that sellers are the ones that have the edge. But right now, buyers have the edge. But we are in a overbought market condition what else can you share with us stevie great question out there let's go switch over to my white background charts see what we can pick up there momentarily we'll be out there we'll start with our daily equity future contracts again we are on the december contract we can see here inside the es mini inside the nq inside the russell 2000 you can see those descending trend lines in the case of the es mini prices up against that level right now if we do get a close above this level and what's that level so here's just kind of a ballpark maybe 57 15 or so if we get it close above that descending trend line, that's going to suggest, let me just open up the chart, that's going to suggest that we make a move for that TD9 count breakdown level, and that's at the uh, 20, well, let me just give it the exact number, I can't read it. That's at the 57.85 level. 57.85 uh, is the TD9 count breakdown resistance here, is the, is the top of the TD9 count pattern. In other words, if price closes above that inside the ES Mini, we are headed higher. In fact, that'll set up an A to B equals CD pad on the upside. We are not there yet. What this is signaling to and I is that we may get up and retest those highs, though. Even though we're overbought, we can still get more overbought. If we take a look at the NQ, the NQ also taking on its descending trend line. I would say that's at about the 19730-ish area, and a close above that should take us up to the recent highs, a TD9 count top. And that would be the high of August 22nd, that high, 22.51. If we close above that, then we're headed back towards its all-time high in the 21.237 area. In the case of the Dow, let's open up this Dow contract. Here, what we have is prices trade above. We're at a new all-time high as we speak right now. There is no topping pattern. In fact, if anything, there's an A to B equals CD pattern that would be setting up today. When would that set up? That would set up today with a close above 42.070. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. 
while this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. We were taking a look at the uh, daily equity future contracts. We didn't get a chance to look at the uh, Russell 2000. We were talking about the Dow equity future contract. So uh, here we're trading. You can see we're trading at new all-time highs. There is no topping signal. There's really no reason for the Dow not to continue to uh, trade higher out there. Of course, we're not looking at any intraday charts, see if there's any kind of topping signals. But right now, on the daily time frame, uh, things are bullish and the rally should continue. Of course, that kind of diverges a bit from that overbought condition that the markets are in as we speak right now. If you take a look at the Russell 2000, she is up against potential resistance. That's the TD9 count breakdown level out here. So this had a nice TD9 count bottom that formed out here on September 11th. And it closed today above the TD9 count breakdown area. That's at 2250. Even Steven out there is going to suggest that we had higher. However, the TD9 count top took place on the trading day of August 26. So that's really another resist potential resistance level, and that's up at 2270. If price were to close above 2270, well, you'd have a couple of things. You'd have a new A to B equals CD pattern. We'd likely get back to its all-time high out there. So right now you want to watch the 2250 level out here. Uh, so those are that's what's going on. We take a look at the daily equity future contracts. We'll come back and take a look at what's going on uh, underneath the covers out there in some of those intraday time periods. But we do have one question that's coming. I'm just checking here. I'd like to make sure I get through all the questions. Of course, I'd love to get many questions. We only have two out here. So the first one is from Ron. Ron inside the Tigers then. Double R. And Ron says he's heard from Charles Schwab not specifically, although maybe, maybe you're out at his place in uh, Pebble Beach out there. He's got a nice uh, place on the uh, course. So, uh, but Charles Schwab is saying that the gold trade is a crowded trade. So the question is, what do my charts say? What do the weekly and the uh, monthly time frame charts say? That was uh, the specific question. So let's put the gold contract up here. First, with regard to the weekly time frame chart, let's open this up. Now, I was under the impression 
I had, I was under the impression that gold was getting ready to do a two-month pullback out there. Well, that theory went out the window on Friday. If we take a look at the uh, Friday uh, candle out here, well, the, the weekly candle, I should say. So we had a TD9 count top. That high was on August, the week of August 23rd, Ron. Uh, it was bar number eight that identified that top. And then last week, price just simply negated that pattern altogether. So there's no topping signal at the moment. Well, I said there's no topping pattern. There is a signal, if you will, and that signal being a Rhodes Mentum indicator pattern that needs a bearish reversal candle. But what is the weekly chart telling you and I at this moment in time, 1121 on September the 17th, that gold wants to move higher? It's going to get more crowded, perhaps, because more people are going to jump on that train. If we take a look at the monthly time frame. Now, the month is not over. It's two weeks from yesterday when the month will be over. So not next Monday, but the following Monday is the end of the month. Well, if gold closes above 25.37.70, and it can give up all those gains after tomorrow's um, 2 o'clock session with Powell out there. But at the moment, as we speak out here, Ron, uh, the gold contract on the monthly and the uh, weekly time frame is in an all-out breakout mode. We're at all-time highs. We've negated top or peers we're going to negate the monthly topping signal out there. Yes, there's a road to indicator pattern that needs a bearish reversal candle to confirm its next top out there. On a daily time frame, you could actually, so on a daily time frame last week, Ron, on Thursday, uh, price negated its TD9 count top. That TD9 count top was on bar number eight. That was on August 20th. We closed above that high on Thursday, negated that signal. Yes, we have road momentum indicator signals that are present. That means we're moving higher. We're doing with less relative energy. It's like stretching a rubber band. If we get a bearish reversal candle, that will let us know that uh, sellers are going to try to exert their effort out there. Now, their first downside price target on a daily time frame, Ron, would become that oscillator and change line. So, Roach momentum indicator signal is present. We could easily get a bearish engulfing candle uh, today. You could get a Three River Evening Star candle formation. Of course, you could get none of those by day's end. But if we do get that short-term top, we should see gold pull back and first test that oscillator and change line. That's at the 2583 level. If price closes below that, the next downside target is 2560. If price were to close below that, then we'd be looking at 2509. So is a trade crowded? I don't even know how you'd make that determination out there. I really don't. But what I can share with you is the weekly and the monthly charts for gold suggest that we are headed much higher. In fact, you know, I didn't really get a chance to do this well during Tom's segment yesterday. Um, let's do this, Ron. What I'll do is, uh, assuming that there's no questions that come in, no additional questions that come in, I'll pull up the presentation that I put together for Tom's show yesterday that showed the reasons why, more likely than not, we are in a major uh, bull market inside of uh, Goldilocks. So that's Stevie's assessment at this moment in time. We do have another question that did come in. Let's read this. This is from, um, this is from uh, Hector and Patty. They want to take a look at the SPY, and they're looking at the A to B equals CD pattern. So what Stevie's going to do is we're going to switch to the black background charts, and we'll put up the uh, SPY out there. It just simply have got the better A to B equals CD tool. So let's get the SPY up here, S-P-Y, and let's read the question. SPY on an A to B equals CD pattern on a weekly basis to the upside. We love the low volume B point, the SPY left in July, for an easy takeout target. We may take it out this week. So let's take a look. You're talking about the weekly time frame. So let's take a look at the weekly time frame chart here for the SPY and see what Stevie sees. So first, if we take a look at the larger picture, which is what I'd like to take a look at, Hector, the larger picture of the A to B equals CD pattern, I think that most everybody's eye would go to the 2020 low. That becomes a really great A point out there. So let's start with that. I don't think that's what you're using, but I just want to start with the larger picture on the weekly time frame. So let's choose that as the A point. Come on, work with us. There we go. The B point, the high that actually took place after that, that we're going to use as the B point is going to be the high from the week of January in 2022, January 3rd. That's our B point. The low that comes in here to form the A to B equals CD to the upside on the weekly time frame is October 10th, 2022. Now, the volume on that trading session back on January 3rd on a weekly basis is 420 million shares. When it was passed, it was passed with 356, 437. So you've got a, and that 437 was the week of January 29th out there. That confirms an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. Now, with inside this, we can take a look at other smaller A to B equals CD patterns. But Hector and Patty, I think it's, it's really, really important 
When we take a look at a, uh, at a stock chart, we're using the A to B equals CD pattern. Open it up as large as you can and look at the largest pattern that you can identify out here. That one is really clear. So this tells us what the SPY's intentions are. Its initial intentions are to make a move up to the 609 level. 609.83 uh, is the exact one-to-one -one A to B equals CD pattern to the upside out there. Now, price right now is trading above the top of its day, uh, top of its weekly profile. The top of that weekly profile, give me a moment here, give me a data box is at the level of 560.48. So you'd like to watch on Friday. You'd like to see price close above that. Now you're talking about using an A to B equals CD. And your A point, you want to use the low volume B point of spot, July. So let me just try it. I'm tr I'm, I apologize, Hector. I'm, I think you actually have to be more specific for Stevie. So you're using as a B point, I believe, using the July 15th area out there. But, um, you know, so what's the A to B equal CD point that you would use? Would you use this low out here from April 15th? Um, you're not showing me what you're using there. Hey, Steve Rhodes at TFNL will be right back. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. The Gold Report As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels, you'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns, you'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry August 9th and 23rd for more live trading action. For this month only, use code LARRYOG24 at checkout to save $50 off your first month as a subscriber to Live Trading Fridays for his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LARRYOG24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. 
Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, so we're taking a look at the uh, spy out here. This is for Hector and Patty. And uh, so I like to, you know, understanding the A to B equals CD pattern uh, is important. I want to really try to help uh, Hector and, and Patty out here. And uh, it's a price projection tool is really what it is out here. And uh, uh, so what, what I like to do, especially as you're learning this, when you have a bunch of noise inside a chart, it becomes maybe difficult to see the larger pattern. That's why I opened up the weekly chart and went back, and I think it's pretty clear uh, that A to B equals CD pattern. With inside this, there are other A to B equals CD patterns that are, you know, that have been uh, ongoing here. And my suggestion there is if you got the larger one on the weekly basis, you go down to the daily time frame. And when you're struggling to figure out where's the predominant A to B equals CD, go to the go to the next larger time frame. Here, if we take a look at this monthly chart, on this monthly chart out here, it's very clear. Taken again using the October of 2020 uh, lows out there. If we want to go back and try to formulate an A to B equals CD pattern coming off of the March 2009 lows, we can do that. But what are we going to use for the B point when we do that? Are we going to use the high from uh, 2020 out there or are we going to use the high from uh, January in 2022? Um, you know, and then why are we even going through that game uh, to do that? So I think on the weekly side, we've identified the A to B equals CD. Now let's come to the daily side. Let's use Stevie's kind of thought process here and take a look at what's going on here on an intraday base, so to speak, with the daily time frame. The swing point that's got to be used, or should be used certainly, to form an A to B equals CD is going to be that high from July 16. That swing point did volume of 36 million shares. We've been trading for two hours today. We're at about 14 million shares. We can multiply 14 times three. We're going to get up uh, to a similar type volume. I don't know if we're going to maintain that volume throughout the day, but we've got the volume potentially to take out that B point of the daily time frame, the all-time high in the spies. Uh, and it just needs more than 37 million shares, 36.5 million shares out there. If we get that, then we're going to have a confirmed A to B equals CD pattern. Now here for the A to B equals CD pattern what I would be using is I could come back right here and choose that low that came in back in April of 2024. That's our A point. Our B point is the swing point that we're taking a look at July 16th and then that C point that retracement takes us back to low on August 5th. Now that's a 0.7 a point a 77% retracement. So it's within inside our 0.786 retracement level. That one to one area would give us a price projection initial price projection of 581. So those are the A to B equals C D patterns that I see out there. I think what uh, maybe what you're trying to use potentially is using as a A point August 5th low, a B point would be the high from August 30th. And then a C point looks like it's the low here from September 6th. But that only gets us to 593. So I didn't even pick up what you were looking at out there. So my apology, but I do hope that, uh, you know, what I've shared with you on the A to B equals CD pattern uh, helps you out and makes sense. It is a subjective pattern, you know, and that that becomes uh, that be can becomes an issue out there. My subjective identification of swing points could easily be different than yours out there. But I'm trying to give you a, a better standard by saying open up the chart. Get as much data, go to larger time frames if it's not clear, if there's an A to B equal CD pattern, and usually it will stick out. It's why we like, it's why I like using the TD9 counts, the breakout levels, you know, because those aren't subjective. Those are objective. Those are part of the pattern that are out there. So I hope that helps you out, Hector and Patty. And uh, th as always, thanks so much for writing in. Um, any other requests by email? I don't see any just yet. I don't think there's anything else inside the Tiger's Den. Although, wait a minute, I haven't been at the right button. Let me see. Uh, Steve, you're now some Wolf as at bottom. So let's go take a look at Wolf. Let's change screens out here for Wolf. We'll get to those white background screens. There we go. Okay, so we take a look at W-O-L-F. And the question is, has it bottom long position from about eight dollars and a half out there? So you got a daily TD nine count bottom. That daily TD nine count bottom uh, completed on on September the tenth. Now what you've got is price trying to close above the top of its daily profile. It'll accomplish that task with a close above eight eighty two today. 
you were at 896. If you get two consecutive closes above 882, what you're going to see, Johnny, is a move up towards 1327. You will have a TD9 count bottom. You will have a, a, a profile change in trend, and uh, that would suggest a move up towards its TD9 count breakdown level, 1327. If we look at the weekly time frame and you were to ask me, has this bottom? The answer to that question would be, we don't have a bottom pattern that I see just yet. Now, I could see an A to B equals CD pattern out here. I see a negated TD9 count. If we were to get a weekly bullish reversal candle, then the answer to that question would be yes. On a weekly basis, because we don't have a bottom pattern, doesn't mean it hasn't bottomed. Uh, maybe it's just taking its P's and Q's from the daily time frame. What you'd be looking for here, the first thing you're looking for on that daily rally, because we don't have that bottom on the weekly time frame, would be how does price deal with its oscillator and change line. The oscillator and change line, Jimmy, is currently printed at 10.05. So 10.05 is going to be a price target to the upside and potential resistance. 13.27 was the TD9 count breakdown area. So it's that weekly oscillator and change line that you've got to keep an eye on. Now, that number is going to move higher as long as price rallies. So right now, just use that as a guideline. On a monthly time frame, what do we see here for Wolf? We see a negated TD9 count bottom pattern. What is Wolf, by the way? W-O-L-F. I, I think, I don't know if it's an ETF or is it a stock. Wolf Speed Inc. Okay, it's a stock out here. And uh, fairly miserable, those folks that are in at the 140 and 130 level, because this is at 895. So do I have, is this trading at an all-time low? Let's pull this back here. It is. So virtually, there's virtually only a handful of people that are possibly in this trade that have any kind of profit in it. And I do not see a monthly bottom. On the monthly chart, you can see that it's very clear that price would need to close above its oscillator and change line uh, at the 2101 level in order to gain any upside traction. But here, on the daily, you've definitely got a bottom. You're in this at a profit at 850 level. You really want to see two consecutive closes above the top of that profile. If you don't, what does that mean? I would say, in the, and this is using Tom's expression, if you can't bust them to the upside, and that's what it would be telling us, then price will try to bust it to the downside. Now, you'll only see two profile levels here. And the reason is the bottom and the center are the same. So that 767 level is strong support. If price closed below 767, I would say you've got to get out of Dodge out there. So I hope that helps you out. I hope you understood what the uh, charts were communicating to us. And, uh, Johnny, thanks so much for taking the time to write in. S&P wants to take a look at uh, BITF, which is a uh, Bitcoin uh, ETF out there, I believe. So BITF. Give me a moment. I hear the sound. So we're going to go to a commercial breakout here. BITF, it's trading. It's got a TD9 count bottom. It's trading above profile resistance at 202. Looking to me like it wants to go target the 234 level. We'll finish taking a look at this chart as soon as we get back from this break. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, You've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. 
Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets, with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at ticker symbol BITX. That's one of the ETFs for uh, Bitcoin out there. This for S&P inside the Tiger's Den. Now, uh, because this is trading off of uh, Bitcoin, I believe it's the October contract that is the active contract out here. And I'm just going to put that up on our screen uh, first out here. And the reason I want to do that is because the underlying instrument is really telling us the uh, picture out here. And what we can see on the daily time frame is right now Bitcoin is up against its TD9 count breakdown resistance level, 61,980. The actual high for the day is 61,990. So that is a level, S&P, that you want to see Bitcoin close above. This is the October contract that would then signal that we're headed higher. Do I have a bottoming pattern out here? I do not. Right now, we may get a profile change in trend. But the real key level out here for your BITX, I mean, I'll go back to it. But 61,980 is the level that you want to be paying attention to. If we didn't go do that and we just went ahead and took a look at BITX, then what Stevie would have said to you is this is going to go rally into 3798. It's TD9 count breakdown resistance area out there. But it's not the ETF that's really controlling what uh, what goes on. The ETF's just taking its signals from whatever the holdings are inside this. Now, what you'd have to do, SNP, is you've got to look that up. See what the holdings are for BITX. Maybe there's September, maybe there's October, maybe. I mean, I just don't know what's inside here. But with regard to BITX, its resistance level is up at the 3798 area. That's on the daily time frame. If we look at uh, weekly, what do I have out here? Not much. We're trading below profile. But if this is going to rally and it closed above 27.98, then your next resistance point would be at about 31.46 or so. Not enough data on a monthly time frame um, to, uh, to pay attention to. So I hope that helps you out. Uh, I hope that answered your question. Let me know if there's additional information that you need, and I'll be happy to get that to you. Mike in Tampa, watch take a look at ticker symbol BLV. So let's get that up on our screen out here. I see what that is, Mike. Thanks for taking the time to write in. And uh, BLV is the Vanguard Bond Index Fund long term. Again, you got to really get a feel for what's inside there. I know it says long term, but here's what we're going to see. We're going to complete BLV is going to complete a TD nine count top today. Uh, so um, what that suggests on a daily time frame is price should pull back to test support. Where's support? First level right now is at uh, 76.28, the asset earned change line. Below that, 76.04. And below that, the area where a counter trend move to the downside would end would be at 75.59. That was a bearish structured daily profile. On a weekly time frame, we do not have any kind of topping signal whatsoever. Price last week took out a TD9 count top. This is an A to B equal CD pattern to the upside. So that looks pretty bullish. 
The monthly time frame is up against its bullish uh, bear structured profile sell zone. 74.98 to 76.49. We are trading above that, but of course the month is not over. The daily says it's getting ready to pull back. That would make sense because the monthly is up at resistance out there. What happens if it doesn't pull back? Well, if you get a close above today's high, whatever today's high is, it'll negate that tinny nine count top. It'll add to the weekly A to B equals CD pattern, and this thing will be off to the races. That is ticker symbol BLV. As far as I'm going to put this on my other screen, as far as what that a to B equals CD pattern could look like. I'm not saying this is what it's going to do, but I did mention that A to B equals CD on the weekly time frame, and that could take us up. That suggests to move up towards the 8005 level out there. Now, let's put up the 30 year. Again, I don't know what bonds are inside this, but let's put up the 30 year chart and see what we've got going on here. I believe we also have a TD9 count top on a daily time frame. That is, yeah, so we're going to complete a TD9 count top here. Um, and uh, so, so you know, it's, it's lining up on a weekly chart here uh, for the December contract. Uh, same kind of signal, potential for an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. So that's what I see, Mike, in Tampa. I hope that helped you out with regard to BLV. We had a request to take a look at Occidental Petroleum. That's coming in from Vic and just says, can we evaluate Oxy? So we take a look at Oxy. This formed a TD9 count bottom about a half a dozen days ago. It's traded with inside its new profile from three days ago. Support is at 50.50. Resists at 52.84. We are trading above a red oscillator and change line. Not as bullish as a green one, but still the mere fact that we're trading above that says that we at least have a rising price oscillator. It's still below zero, but at least it has begun to rise. So this says if Oxy can close above the 51.57 area today, you ought to see a move to 52. 284. If price can take out the 5284 level out there, then where's it headed? Well, how about this on a weekly time frame? Let me get rid of that consolidation pattern. You are likely going to go ahead and confirm a TD9 count bottom this week. It'll complete that pattern next week. At the same time with Occidental Petroleum pulling back and finding support at its bullish structured monthly profile. You wanted me to review it. Well, thank you for asking that. Those folks looking to take a long position inside of Occidental Petroleum, you're getting that message as we speak. A definite bottom pattern on the daily time frame. Looks like we're going to complete or confirm a TD9 count bottom on Friday. Complete that pattern next week uh, for the uh, for Occidental Petroleum. And you got the monthly that's testing support, that bullish structured support area. That's between the zone of 5005 and 5484. Now, do you take a long position right this moment, right this very second? Well, Steve, we would say be patient here. Why? Well, you've got a TD9 count top on the 30 minute time frame that could form between 12 noon and uh, 1.30. So just keep an eye on that. So that would say that, okay, we could get a pullback, and then what you'd be looking to do is to buy that retracement out there. No guarantees that this is going to come to fruition, this 30-minute TD9 count, but that's the pattern that is in play as we speak right now. So I'd be patient, let that thing work out. But that's what I see when we take a look at the charts for Occidental Petroleum. And uh, thanks so much for that request, Vic. Let's see if I've got anything else that I overlooked here. Yep, we've got one. Uh, nope, we already took care of that. That was Wolf. And, yeah, Stevie doesn't see anything else out there. Of course, we only have about two minutes, so I'm not going to go through yesterday's presentation. I can't do that in two minutes. Uh, a great trade, potential great trade. How do I know if it's going to be a great trade or not? I don't know if the trade's going to work out. But, boy, we take a look at that. Yeah, we talked about this yesterday, the Japanese yen. If you take a look at this, today completes on the daily time frame. Let's just simply expand this out. It completes a TD9 count bottom pattern today. And at the same time it's doing that, it's confirming a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. Does that mean two bottoms are better than one? No. Bottom is a bottom. But you do like this here. We are trading above that oscillator and change line. This is suggesting to you and I that the uh, Japanese yen ought to rally up to the 145.55 level out there. So you got that bottom on that daily time frame. And it turns out on the uh, weekly time frame, you are completing a TD9 count bottom pattern today. So 145.55 is its price target. Your price can get above that. You then have oscillator and change line on the weekly time frame to deal with. Right now, let's call it about the 149 level. And if you get above 149, you're up to the 158.86 area. So you got a nice looking trade set up inside of the US dollar, Japanese yen. And uh, 
We're about to go to a break, about 10 seconds from now. So I'll go through all the emails, make sure I haven't overlooked anything. Go inside the Tiger's Den as well, see if I've overlooked anything there as well. Steve Rhodes with TFN. Right now you've got all the U.S. Indies that we trade, or we track our trading to the upside. Dow's up 105, S&P 20. We'll be right back. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets, with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97, and with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. So uh, no other requests that I see. Uh, let's just uh, take a look at the uh, daily equity future contracts out here, get a feel for any signals they're providing to you and I. So 57.2475, that's the key number to be watching inside the ES Mini. Why is that, Stevie? Because that is the high of the TD9 count pattern that went ahead and completed on August 22nd. If price closes above that, that's going to suggest that we run back to the TD9 count breakdown level at 57.81. So watch 57.2475. If we look at the five-hour time frame chart, we do not have any kind of a topping pattern. It is in full breakout mode. If we look at the 240-minute uh, time frame chart, it does look like we are in a we have a wave number seven pattern that is still in place out here. Uh, that's going to require a lower high. The earliest that that could take place would be at the end of the session. So no topping signal yet on the 240-minute. On the 120-minute time frame chart, there is a roadsman to indicator top. It would be negated with a close by 57.27. Price right now trading inside a support zone. Uh, the buy zone out here is between 57.08 and 
The 60-minute time frame has a TD9 count top. Support is down at 5709, below that 5692.50. Roads but Dominicator top on the 30-minute time frame chart. Uh, it's up support levels 5712. Below that would be 5692. A 15-minute Roads but Dominicator top at 10-minute Roads but Dominicator top. Key level of support there. So if you're doing this, you know, inch by inch, so to speak, 5711. Uh, 25 would be the area to watch for both the 10 minute and the 15 minute uh, chart out there. If those areas of support hold, well, that tells you a ton. Let's go take a look at the NQ real quickly here. Let's get those charts up on our screen before we, whoops, that's not going to work. See if we get to this before we uh, close out the uh, show out here. Um, yeah, so we know that prices, the key level here, I would say. The key level here be 2251.25. That's the TD9 count top. And what did I put? December 25. Okay. Well, Stevie screwed up there because we're not going to get any contract data for December of 2025. Folks, stay tuned for all the great programming. I'll be back with you tomorrow, 11 a.m. sharp. Have a terrific Tuesday and be safe out there. Take care.